<laughs> what is that tune you're humming? Oh, you don't know? Christmas is coming up. And you know that how? You're in space. On a different planet. With a different star and rotation. So the days should be completely different than that of Earth's. Because shut up. Anyways, since I don't have any alcohol for this Christmas season, I'm just gonna try to drive you crazy. Ha! Please, I'm already insane enough. But do try your best. I'll love seeing your failure. Anyways, I'm gonna take a look at a Christmas classic, Twilight Zone's Night of the Meek. Problem there. It's already been covered by someone else. What? By who? By that female wolf of yours. While you were drinking. Dang. Stupid drinking problem of mine that I totally have and didn't make up for random reasons because of tropes surrounding the holiday. Fortunately for you, there is another Night of the Meek that exists. A fan dub or abridged version? No. Despite all the amounts of abridged media today. Instead, I provided you a version from the 1980s. Your feline sibling has been covering a bit of the episodes from it, but I've saved this one just for such an occasion like today. What do you mean? Cat has been reviewing quite a bit of them alongside other shows of horror. However, you'll be doing this one. Not only will it be special for your viewers in some form, but it will provide torture for you and progress for me. Progress? For what? Never mind that, this bit is going on long enough, to s so start the review already. Uh, okay. So this version of Night of the Meek is from 1985, and stars a lot of people. Henry Corwin, the department store Santa, is played by Richard Mulligan, while his boss is played by William Atherton. Richard Mulligan was in an episode of Gunsmoke, some of Bonanza, and also a couple of Golden Girls, but he was also in the Twilight Zone episode, The Toys of Caliban, of the 1986 version. William Atherton, on the other hand, was Walter freaking Peck from Ghostbusters, as well as Richard Thornburg in Die Hard 1 and 2. And that's all I'm doing for looking up the cast, because I normally don't do it, and I'll probably miss some of the things that made them big. Seeing the opening thing of this new Twilight Zone is a bit weird for me as well, because it makes me think I'm on a bad trip, rather than entering a zone beyond imagination and time. It opens up in a mall with Christmas music playing, and one of the workers is moving the clock back for when Santa should be back, which gets his boss in a tizzy. Not sure where this mall Santa is, because Henry Corrin is in an area that looks more like a hotel lobby rather than a bar from the original. Like the original, some kids see him at the hotel lobby bar, but the guy next to him says he could go out to cheer them up. Santa replies that him doing so would just be a cruel joke. Hey, Mr. C. Huh? What? Did I miss something, or is Enterprise beaming money into his pockets? With no questions, he leaves, and we see Henry giving the kids the money, I believe. Kinda hard to see through that window, to be honest. We cut back to inside the store, and Dundee's gift to his wife has been sold by accident as Henry goes back to work and seeming a little tipsy. What's that? Actual subtle signs of drinking? Well, we can't have that for a moment, so it gets spelled out to the audience by the two black children, and then... Santa! <laughs> Mr. Dundee immediately fires him, and then kicks him, in a l and then kicks him a little while he's down. I hope you're satisfied disappointing on those little boys and girls. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Just like the original, we get an emotional speech from Drunk Mall Santa. Instead of talking about what Christmas is and how he's lost his emotions like the original Henry, he instead talks about how none of the kids will be disappointed since tomorrow is when they'll get their presents. Today is just simply another day to them 
rather than the holiday called Christmas. Now, as much as I'd harangue an adaptation or remake for changing what is considered a big part of the original work, his speech kinda works. Rather than focus on Christmas's true meaning, he calls out how nobody today really cares for what Christmas actually is. To everyone, the holiday is dead except for the buying of presents, so it's just a day, nothing special, and just a husk. As night falls, he goes back home, apparently he's had one this whole time, and hears some kids singing carols outside his window and says that, I wish I had something to give them. And they depart while he goes to take out his trash. He hears the sound of some bells and comes across a toy moving on its own after falling out of his garbage bag. Yep, his garbage bag is magical. But then the scene gets ruined with his overacting. It's Did the drugs finally kick in or what? Why did the actor decide to pitch himself as high as he could go? Also, there's one joke I have to make with this now. Had to get that out of the way. Anyways, let's just cut away from the actual character we should be focusing on and go to the mall closing for the night with an annoyed Mr. Dundee. As he drives through the manic streets of people running about, he sees people lighting Christmas lights all across the streets, and Henry who is passing out the perfect presents for everyone from his garbage bag. And I do mean the perfect gift. Hell, he even gets an actual picture of eggnog, and a pipe an old guy saw back when he was in the Navy. Dundee asks Henry where he got all of this, with Henry having no idea and just going along with things. But Dundee decides to call the police, thinking it was all stolen. Classic Dundee move. The officer questions how Henry got them, to which he replies it was the bag. And just like the original, Dundee looks like a fool when he takes stuff out of the bag and instead of presents coming out, he pulls out garbage. Their things have to be collected as evidence, but as he leaves, the bag starts to drop receipts, which clear all the items. Of course, it all makes sense now. Yeah, the bag went into the store and bought everything. Yes, wait, what? No, you moron. It's just a magic bag for the sake of convenience. Even more convenient than in the original. Original? Wait, you've seen the original? I know of it from watching the review done by the female wolf. In that version, it never creates the receipts. Instead, Mr. Dundee and the officer, as well as Henry, believe it to be something supernatural and just leave it at that. Henry just leaves without the receipts being made since there is very little evidence they could use against him. Here, the bag is just a deus ex machina, fixing problems with no rhyme or reason at the exact point that is necessary. Yeah, that is a bit of an issue. Rather than the bag being only useful to Henry and its sole purpose was to give the perfect gift, the creation of receipts is more of a we need to fix the problem we created scenario, rather than an actual gift to anyone. But it's only a small problem. Small. Problem. You. Are calling this. A small. Problem. Everything okay there? You sound like you're gonna go off. It's. Fine. Just continue this review. Uh. Okay, anyways, after the parade of receipts, Mr. Dundee is sitting on the stairs and says that he'll find out how Henry is doing what he's doing, but the receipts just vanish into snow. How did that happen? Never question miracles. Oh, okay, I see it now. You're not going to explain because you simply can't explain it, right writers? Henry gives Mr. Dundee the coat his wife wanted, as well as a baseball signed by famous players from the Yankees. Henry talks about how he doesn't really need a gift either, except jokingly says how he'd like to live this feeling of joy for giving gifts every year. So Henry re-enters his home, still in his outfit, 
But now, his beard is real, and magically shitty computer effects turn him into stardust as he flies through the night sky, now officially transforming into Santa Claus. So, what did you think of it? Does it make you angry of how bad of an adaptation this is? How it barely speaks about what Christmas is? I mean, it's not that terrible. Heck, even the original doesn't go much into what Christmas is outside the little speech, but they both are consistent with Henry giving presents to the kids. However, the original is titled Night of the Meek for a reason. A quick definition of meek gave me two different results. One, showing patience and humility, gentle, and two, easily imposed on, submissive. Henry fits the first definition as he only wants to bring gifts to people to bring happiness and is not selfish in the slightest, while the children and homeless he gives gifts to are the second definition since they are the ones controlled or forgotten by society. In this version, Henry gives presents out to everyone except the homeless for some reason. But I guess that's fine. He still does it out of a sense of generosity and humility. But what about the bags? Well, there was really no point of the new version having the bag be a trash bag from his apartment rather, th rather than some random bag in a back alley. It's just some random change, I guess. You can only assume that it was changed because it makes more sense that he would start with the bag rather than happen upon it in some random alley. But that question of how it's magical still remains in this version as well. Since Dundee still pulls out garbage instead of presents, but it's less funny since he isn't as oblivious to what he pulls out. There's no explanation at all, whereas the original also downplayed questioning where the bag came from, but did come up with some loose idea of how to explain it, basically saying that it's something weird or not from their world, which then allows the idea of it coming from the Twilight Zone, whatever that would be, to be plausible. It could have been easy to come up with an explanation that still is even a small explanation, even if said as a joke, like, maybe it's just Christmas magic, or a Christmas miracle, rather than saying, don't question miracles. But there's more, isn't there? More to dislike and take apart. Of course there is. The focus on Dundee was unnecessary. All it got across was that he's kind of a dick because the one-of-a-kind present he put on hold for his wife was sold to someone else by pure accident. The original one was just as one note, but the writers kept him to be his usual one-note smug self, which was fun to laugh at, though he was kind of annoying. This one, the Walter Peck Dundee, I don't feel any pity like I probably should. He just comes across to me as some dude. I also question why he got a baseball signed by Yankees players since it kind of seemed out of nowhere, whereas the original Mr. Dundee did have a reason to have his gift given. He was just teasing and thought it impossible, thinking that the gift to, that would be given to him would be an impossibility, and was thoroughly surprised when he actually did get his gift from the magical bag that no one understands. Like I said, one big change was the speeches between the two supposedly drunk mall Santas. The original one talks about what Christmas should be, and how he's lost the ability to feel any real happiness, how drinking is almost all he does, and how he wishes the meek could inherit the earth or see some form of happiness. This helps build him as a character, how he's almost given up on his hope, and it's what drives him to give out the gifts later. Here, he talks about how Christmas is just another day in our continued survival, and how not sitting in Santa's lap won't disappoint any child in the store. But his actions don't really line up with his speech. He delivers presents because of the joy he gets from bringing others joy, but it doesn't really align because they're kind of two different things, survival and the bringing of joy. His, a his actions bring joy. What he said was, People won't really care since they'll still get presents on Christmas. At least, the children in the store would. But what about the acting between the two? Well, they both had some problems. The original one spent too long on his speeches, but that's probably done to showcase him as still being buzzed. Whereas this one dr hardly drinks at all, I think. We get the idea that he drinks while he's in the bar, and the, other w and the only other time he drinks is when he pours some alcohol into his coffee. 
However, the original never had the point where he overacts, while the new one laughs at a higher pitch twice. They, the way they become Santa is also kind of weird in both cases. They both wish for the ability to bring joy to other people, that's consistent, but their official transformations are vastly different. Original Henry becomes Santa after seeing the elf and sleigh in the back of the same alley he found the bag, which is still kind of weird, while this new one sees his beard become permanent, becoming a bit larger himself, even laughing a couple of ho ho ho's, and then turns into magic sparkles to exit his fireplace. They're both fairly weird, but the 80s version is just a little too weird. So then, what's your final verdict? You've been waffling around your review this whole time. Let's get to that at least. This episode feels weird to you and sometimes has things that break the normal logic. Poor CGI, decent acting with some strange parts here and there, and a message about Christmas that seems forgotten much like the present day. It's... Decent as a reboot. Not great, but not that bad either. The original has the more feel of a Christmas classic movie, even in its music and actions, whereas this one shifts some focus onto Dundee, but doesn't really do a lot with him outside of showing him disappointed and annoyed about circumstances. So, I think I have to give this reboot a 7 out of 10. It had some bad moments here and there, but overall it's good to watch. I'm Wolf, and I'll see you all later, and hope you all have a Merry Christmas. So, what was all that supposed to be for? Oh, just a step towards hopelessness. Hopelessness? From what? You and I both know something you want. Quality. A sense that the writers and actors care for their performances and the story. It's disappearing, don't you think? Yeah, but I'm sure something good will happen. It has to. Even if it's not from a big production company, some good show or movie will come along that I'll want to see. But you don't want to see those good things, do you? You don't want to like what everyone else also likes. That only ruins the experience for you. But that's only half true. The other thing that ruins everything for you... is you.